Welcome back, everyone. It is um, just the hour in whatever, well, in most time zones that you might be in. Um, with this, we're introducing our new format, Tool Talks, and our first presenter is going to be Bernard Trolls from the University of Sydney in Australia, talking about Siffle. Bernard? Thanks so much, Christoph. Today, thanks so much for inviting me for this Tool Talk. So today I'm talking about Siffle, and Souffle has been a very long journey. So it started as a visiting professor from 2013 to 2015. And um, way back, uh, the Oracle Labs in Brisbane was predominantly programming their static program analysis tools in C++. And uh, as a consequence, the development time of these tools was quite lengthy. For a small program analysis, it was sort of calculated one, one and a half person years. And um, way back, we wanted to basically overcome these long development times. And uh, we have been reading a lot about data log. We started to understand Yanni's work uh, about Doop. He will present this later. And so we wanted really to uh, used a declarative approach, a domain-specific language approach for um, reducing uh, the development time of static program analysis. And the idea was to really come up with a new paradigm uh, for evalu evaluating data log programs to achieve basically uh, performance, which is seen in handwritten C++ code. And uh, that was the genesis of souffle. And so souffle needed really some new techniques for making uh, the evaluation fast. So we had to use heavily um, uh, program specialization techniques. And these specialization techniques are based on Futamura projections. We had some early papers, uh, a CAF paper and a CC paper. But to really make it fast, uh, fast like uh, handwritten C++ code, we needed really quite a bit of database technology as well. So we had to develop highly parallel in-memory relational uh, B trees for representing these relations in data log. We needed auto index selection to really minimize the memory consumption and increase the speed. And we needed quite a bit of other extensions like provenance and for debugging and uh, equivalence relations. So there was a really a lot of work the last five years uh, centered around Souffle to make it useful and really fast for static program analysis applications, but also for other applications uh, wanting to use Starlog as a domain specific language. The history of data log in static program analysis goes way back. So it goes back to RAPS um, and Angular. They have been introducing data log for static program analysis problems um, quite in, in, in the mid 90s. And uh, the, um, the, the, the key observation there was that um, horn logic is a very natural way for expressing abstract program semantics. So in only a few lines of code, you can really uh, express very powerful systems. And it really uh, does not require backtracking in this data log semantics. So in theory, it should be, but uh, it takes quite a bit of work to really make it fast. But let's go uh, in more detail to a static program analysis setup. And so what we have here is an input program. It gets pushed through an extractor and what this extractor is doing, it just really um, um, translates the a program of the uh, an input program into a relational format. The program analysis itself is expressed in form of rules. And then the output of the extractor, these are basically uh, the, um, uh, input relations um, get then pushed into a data log engine like Souffle, and then we get the output. And here for Souffle, we really need to 
um, acknowledge that um, the facts may change, but the rules cannot change because they get synthesized to standalone programs. Um, how this works is really that um, it's quite a complex procedure. Several uh, stages are involved to uh, create um, an executable program from a set of rules. But um, what we um, have to really uh, ease a little bit the um, execution, uh, we have an interpreter which makes the execution um, set up a little bit faster, but then when it's evaluating, it's slower, whereas the synthesizer is there to really uh, create a standalone tool, a, a library or a program in its own right, uh, which um, can then be executed very fast. Here's a small little example. I don't want to go much into detail about the semantics. It's, I feel quite obvious, but it's a security analysis problem. It's related to Java JDK as well, where uh, you have something um, uh, called the security coding, coding guidelines. And what you want to achieve is that a vulnerable statement is protected by a protect statement. And you can express this via simple reachability analysis where you have an basically an unsafe region. So from the starting point in the control flow graph, um, you basically reach forward in the direction of the control flow graph and you only propagate um, unsafeness if the current statement is not a protect and the violation itself is then um, basically an unsafe statement, which is vulnerable. And you can then really express this nicely in three logic rules. And I really want to demonstrate this, that this is not just an example. I really want to demonstrate this also in form of a tool. So I um, try to achieve this um, by switching to my terminal. So here I have really the same example in Souffle. And what you can see here is that there we have uh, a little bit more scaffolding for um, uh, running this Souffle um, program or the data log specification as a program. So we need some notions of declarations of these relations. And then also we need to say that uh, we need to read some of these relations as input. We see exactly the same rules here um, from the slides and then at the end, uh, the output. And when we run this in the interpreter, we just need to run Souffle, which you need to install. You can either install it from scratch, going straight to the GitHub repository, or there are some pre uh, packaged versions of Souffle for various operating systems. You need to install it and then you have Souffle running in your terminal. And if you really want to run now this analysis, what you can say, you can say um, vulnerable.dl, that's the security analysis, minus D minus says it um, really um, uh, sort of should um, print the output on uh, the standard output and, um, and then I need a minus F for letting know where the facts are. And these facts are just uh, standard fact files. And as expected, the last statement is really vulnerable because it could be a zero trip loop. The fact files themselves, like uh, the edge fact file is just a um, tab separated um, text file and so it's very quite easy to process um, for uh, doing, um, for running um, starter log programs. So I want to switch back to my presentation. So this was really just a very quick flavor of souffle. And um, there are other ways of running it uh, using the compiled version, which will take a little bit longer. You can generate the C++ code itself for embedding it into other projects. Uh, and there are, of course, language interfaces. As in, in my last minute or so, I want just to highlight 
souffle is not is declarative or dialogue is declarative, but it's not performance declarative. So you need to put quite a bit of effort into making souffle programs really fast. So you really definitely need to do the synthesis, the compilation. You also need to uh, work very hard on your query schedule. So a lot of these uh, rules you specify in souffle require dot plan statements to really make it fast. And it's an art form to really uh, get this performance. And to achieve this also, you should use profiling. So there is uh, a profiler and when you run it, you will notice only a handful of these rules a performance dominant and you need to then optimize these performance dominant rules. So VLA is really built for um, large scale logic oriented programming. So we have notions of components, we have recursive uh, records uh, in logic programming you might want to, uh, is, is also known as, as terms. We have functors, so it's really a during uh, equivalent machinery. Uh, we have a type system, we have signed, unsigned, float and symbols. Uh, and there's really a cornucopia of different features making uh, logic programming for larger static program analysis uh, projects much easier than using classical um, uh, data log. There have been a huge number of projects now using Souffle. Here's only a handful of projects. I apologize if I haven't listed um, all of them, but a very dominant one is the Dupe project. Yanis will talk about this later. Um, we have um, uh, Open JDK security analysis, which we did early, originally in, in, at Oracle Labs a lot of smart contract analysis. We have binary translation at grammar tech, some Haskell optimizations and so on. So this is really my last slide. I'm already a little bit over. Um, we have a GitHub repository. There is a lot of ongoing work um, in the area of scheduling, type system, union records and incremental evaluation. Um, and I welcome everyone to join the Souffle community. Thanks so much for this. Thank you very much. Um, we have a first question by Andrew Jones, which is how does Souffle compare to something like CodeQL from GitHub? Um, I'm not so familiar with CodeQL, I have to admit. Um, code, well, first of all, Souffle is not specific to code um, analysis. Uh, it's, it has been designed for it, but you can say it's really a very basic, pure data log engine, which um, focuses on um, the fact that rules never can change, are always static, only the input, the facts may change. Uh, and so there are these inbuilt um, assumptions and um, it's, it's really more a language than a tool in some ways. Thank you. We have a next question from Alan Cox about uh, what does manual query planning let you do in Souffle? Okay, so I, I, the 10 minute format is a little bit tight to explain this yes. in more detail. I wanted to explain it in more detail, but so what this really means, this dot plan uh, statement is that um, for each rule, there is a loop nest is generated and um, the order of these loops is arbitrary. Uh, so any order is okay. In, uh, is, is semantically correct, but performance-wise, it has a big impact. And uh, the user needs now to find a good permutation to uh, really achieve performance. And, and we are talking about 10x, 100x factors. If a wrong uh, uh, predicate order in the body or wrong dot plan statements are chosen. 
Thank you very much. And I think with that, we're out of time. Uh, but thank you for the very interesting talk. Unfortunately, we didn't get to hear much about what version 2.0 is going to bring in new, fact, in new matters. 